when you consider the fact that the Earth is almost 71% water, it would be safe to assume that there are some creatures living there that we don't know much about. However, many of these creatures lurk so deep below sea level that we'll never have to worry about a chance encounter while taking a swim. But you might never enter the ocean again after you see what else could be lurking there. Don't say we didn't warn you. 15 most terrifying monsters found deep in the sea. Faceless Cusk Eel Among meat-eating sponges, flesh-eating crustaceans, zombie worms, blind sea spiders, and a toothy dragonfish, scientists found a fish without a face. Australian researchers found a strange-looking faceless fish during an expedition, which they now call the Faceless Cusk. It's rarely seen but widely distributed from the Arabian Sea to Hawaii. This faceless cusk was discovered about 13,000 feet below the surface. It lives along a relatively barren seafloor in waters that are about 34 degrees Fahrenheit. The team sent tissue samples to experts for analysis and learned their faceless swimmer was originally discovered during the first global oceanographic expedition in the Coral Sea in 1874. After closer investigation, the cusk had tiny eyes on the underside of its head where its mouth was, but they were buried under the skin. It has poor eyesight and relies instead on sensory organs in its jelly-like head to survey its environment. Scientists don't know much about it yet. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. The blue whale is not only the largest animal alive today, it's the largest one that's ever lived. They can reach up to 100 feet. Perhaps even more surprising to scientists, though, is the fact that a whale of this size swam the seas around one and a half million years ago, during the early Pleistocene, far earlier than previously thought. The genus named Leviathan, after the fearsome sea monster in the Bible, seems more than appropriate for a giant prehistoric whale. Because of the lack of multiple fossil specimens, we're not exactly sure how long Leviathan ruled the seas but it's a sure bet that this giant whale occasionally crossed paths with the equally giant prehistoric shark Megalodon. While it's dubious that these two apex predators would have deliberately targeted one another, they may well have butted heads in the pursuit of the same prey. So, this diver's tiny little fishing spear isn't going to have much of an effect on beasts this size. What's going through your mind when you're eye to eye with a whale like this? Leave your thoughts in the comments with the hashtag sweet topic. Giant tube worms They were discovered in 1977 on an expedition. However, giant tube worms' discovery was unexpected. The team was studying hydrothermal vents and no biologists were included in the expedition, and many of the species found living near hydrothermal vents during this expedition had never been seen before. Crushing pressure, freezing temperatures, and zero sunlight aren't enough of a challenge for giant tube worms. They've adapted to thrive at the edge of hydrothermal vents, which spew superheated water saturated with toxic chemicals. Perhaps the most noticeable characteristic of these worms is their bright red plume. This is a specialized organ used for exchanging compounds such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hydrothermal sulfide with the seawater. Although the worms have no eyes, they can sense movement and vibrations and will retreat into their protective tubes when threatened. Even under such harsh conditions, they have the fastest growth rate of any known marine invertebrate. These organisms have been known to colonize a new site, grow to sexual maturity, and increase in length to five feet in less than two years. Crazy, huh? The Megamouth Shark On the occasion that one of these monsters is caught on camera, Scientists, fascinated by the Megamouth's physical oddities, automatically catapult the shark to social media infamy. Yet we know very little about its behavior or how its unique physical traits operate. The creature was dubbed the Megamouth Shark due to its gaping mouth and huge jaw, and the name has stuck ever since. On an individual approximately 16 feet in length, the mouth is approximately 4 feet across. You could actually swim into it. However, it's the smallest of the three species of filter-feeding sharks, behind the whale shark and the basking shark, and it has only been observed in the wild just a few times, and less than 60 individuals are known by scientists. 
The Megamouth, believed to be diurnal, meaning the creature mostly operates during the day, regularly alternates between the shallow and deep waters of mostly Taiwan and Japan, but have also been observed traveling from the Atlantic Ocean right through to the Pacific and Indian Oceans. The Megamouth shark was first discovered in 1976 by a U.S. Navy research vessel operating around Oahu, Hawaii, when the shark became tangled in some cables. The elusive big fin squid. This footage shows the big fin squid at a depth of one and a half miles looking exactly like a mythical beast in its natural habitat. Like the tripod monsters in the War of the Worlds movie, big fin squids are one of the deep sea's more ethereal, unusual creatures. Over the last decade, with the increased usage of remotely operated vehicles, more and more video is emerging of these strange animals. Their fins are up to 90% of the length of the body, and they have ridiculously long arms. And as you can see, the squid often will hold some of the arms at a 90-degree angle from the side of its body, which gives them the appearance of having elbows. The big fin squid is around 26 feet in length, with thin elastic tentacles thought to be between 15 to 20 times larger than the squid's body. Very little is known about the feeding behavior of these squid, although scientists believe that they feed by dragging their arms and tentacles along the seafloor, grabbing organisms off the floor. But they may use a simple trapping technique, waiting for prey to bump into their super long arms. They were first discovered in 1907, but it wasn't until 1988 that the first footage was filmed off the coast of Brazil. Hagfish Frenzy Attack of the slime eels, as they're sometimes called, except hagfish are not eels, and when they're hungry, they do not play. If a dead animal falls to the bottom of the sea, it's typically a hagfish, and all of their little friends that gets there first burrowing their entire bodies into the carcass. Although they're jawless, hagfish have two rows of tooth-like structures that they use to burrow deep into carcasses. They can also bite off chunks of food. While eating carrion or live prey, they tie their tails into knots to generate torque and increase the force of their bites, and hagfish can absorb nutrients straight through their skin as well. The biggest irony is when it comes to these feeding fiends, hagfish can go months without food. Growing up to 18 inches in length, hagfish have some truly bizarre features such as eyes that cannot see, four hearts, up to 15 sets of gills, and they can change their gender season to season. Plus, hagfish have mind-blowing slime superpowers. To dodge predators, hagfish instantly produce loads of mucus and thin protein fibers through glands lining their bodies. When the slime makes contact with seawater, it expands into a transparent sticky goo, filling the gills and choking its attacker, making the hagfish almost impossible to devour. Supergiant Amphipods Scientists on an expedition to sample a deep-sea trench got a surprise when their traps brought back seven giant crustaceans glimpsed only a handful of times in human history. The pale, leggy creatures were found four miles down in the Kermatic Trench off the northeast coast of New Zealand, one of the deepest trenches on Earth. A seafloor camera more than a mile away spied at least nine supergiant amphipods. It's not clear why so many of the typically elusive creatures were in the area. A week later, when the expedition returned to the same spot, there was no sign of the supergiant amphipods, which was very, very strange. Supergiant amphipods were first discovered in 1899 when a trawling expedition turned up two specimens from the Atlantic Ocean. The species wasn't seen again for nearly 100 years. In the 1970s, scientists photographed the oversized creatures in the northern Pacific Ocean, hundreds of miles north of Hawaii. And in 1983, an albatross regurgitated a supergiant amphipod that, not surprisingly, was in poor shape. <laughs> Floating Spaghetti Monster Is it just me, or does this sea monster look like a bowl of noodles turned upside down underwater? What is it? Researchers identified the creature as a siphonophore. Similar to corals, the spaghetti-like siphonophore is made up of many different multicellular organisms known as zooids. These organisms are a lot like regular solitary animals, except that they're attached to other zooids, forming a more complex organism. One zooid, developed from a fertilized egg, starts the process, and then other zooids bud from the original zooid until a whole animal is formed. 
They belong to a family that includes both corals and jellyfish and are not single creatures but actually colonies of as many as thousands of creatures that work in tandem as a single unit. Some of these colonies superficially resemble jellyfish. It was nicknamed the Flying Spaghetti Monster for internet purposes and the pursuit of likes by the oil workers who first saw it. Workers videotaped this strange looking animal while collecting video footage some 4,000 feet under the sea with a remotely operated underwater vehicle. 10 Foot Bobbit Worm Think the Mongolian death worm meets the graboids from Tremors, meets the bugs from Starship Troopers, and a rainbow. Meet the Bobbit Worm. Found in warmer oceans around the world, this weird worm buries itself into sediment, leaving only its mouth exposed with its huge, scissor-like jaws open wide. Five antenna protruding from its head act like tripwires. If a fish should accidentally brush past one of them, it has mere milliseconds to flee. Grabs the fish and takes it back into the sand. The bobbit worm's razor-sharp mouth parts strike with such velocity that prey is sometimes sliced clean in two. It also injects them with a toxin to help break down its food to make it easier to digest. So this isn't just a worm, it's a weapon. A very powerful one indeed. Before we go any further, let's just go ahead and get this out the way. The Bobbit Worm may or may not be named after John Bobbit, whose misadventures won't be elaborated on here. The story goes that an underwater photographer saw the worm's powers of amputation as being similar to those of Bobbit's wife Lorena. But according to a marine biologist, the origin of the name is unclear. <laughs> Giant Oarfish A remotely operated vehicle has come face to face with the world's longest known bony fish, and video footage of the rare giant oarfish has now surfaced. However, the giant oarfish is rarely seen alive. The giant oarfish, which has been known to reach up to a whopping 110 feet long and weigh 600 pounds, is a deep sea fish. Oarfish are typically found at depths of about 656 feet but can lurk as deep as about 3,280 feet in the deep seas of the eastern Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea. The origin of the oarfish name is unknown, but because of its long, thin shape, the oarfish fish is sometimes known as the ribbon fish. These long, silver creatures have been known to wash ashore on beaches after storms too. They also have a habit of floating near the surface of the water when they're sick or dying. Because of this, it's believed that the oarfish may be responsible for many of the legendary sightings of the sea monsters and sea serpents by ancient mariners and beachgoers. But the oarfish is thriving and not considered to be an endangered species. Unusual oarfish fact? Some people claim that oarfish washing ashore is a sign that an earthquake is on its way. Titan Triggerfish if you're diving in the Indo-Pacific region, you may want to keep an eye out for this feisty fish. The Titan Triggerfish packs a mean bite and is more often the reason behind divers and snorkelers sporting teeth marks in their fins, skin, missing ears, and the cause of many bruises. A prominent sign of trouble is when the fish rolls onto its side and with their independently rotating beady eyes gives you the old evil eye just before they charge at you. Sometimes you'll see its black fin tips raised in warning of the attack. While only known to be aggressive and territorial during the reproduction season and when guarding its nest, the Titan Triggerfish has a notorious reputation that definitely increases a diver's anxiety levels around it and mostly, it's well deserved. Almost anyone who's done a fair amount of scuba diving in these tropical regions will have had a run-in or two with this species of triggerfish at some point or another. They've also been observed to go for bright colors, so if they come close, try to get your dive fins or a hard object between you and the Titan. Needless to say, it's better to have a hole in your gear rather than your body. World's Most Toxic Sea Urchin The most toxic sea urchin is not the fire urchin as you might think. So what if scientists named the most toxic urchin? The flower urchin. The scientific name means toxic foot, so anybody in the scientific community or who is versed in Latin will know to avoid it. Toxins from the spines and its small pincer-like organs cause severe pain, respiratory problems and paralysis. Its common name is derived from being flower-like with unusual pinkish white to yellowish white colors with a central purple dot. It possesses short and blunt spines too, so be careful. 
The rigid shell is a deep red and gray in color, though in rare cases it may be greenish to light purple. It is a widespread and commonly encountered species of sea urchin from the Indo-West Pacific and considered highly dangerous as it's capable of delivering extremely painful and medically significant stings when touched. It inhabits coral reefs, seagrass beds, and rocky or sandy environments at depths of 295 feet and feeds on algae, bryozoans, and organic deritus. The more you know. Deep Sea Frilled Shark The frilled shark belongs among the world's most primitive shark species, with a ruffled throat and lizard-like rounded head. Due to the fact that the frilled shark is a descendant of a shark species traced back to around 99 million years ago, the frilled shark is often referred to as a living fossil. With a face only a mother could love, it sticks out from the rest of the sharks and looks nothing like the sharks that we're familiar with. Frilled sharks grew to about 4 feet long. In hunting and eating prey, the frilled shark curves and coils its body and braces its rear fins against a hard surface for leverage. The frilled sharks pack a rapid strike bite. The wide gape of the distinted long jaws allows devouring whole prey that are more than half the size of the frilled shark itself. With its jaws 300 recurved teeth readily snagging and capturing prey, the frilled shark has a relatively weak bite. Since its discovery in the 1880s, the frilled shark has been spotted in over 20 countries, including Arctic Norway, New Zealand, both U.S. coasts, Japan, and Chile. The species is occasionally sold in fish markets in Japan and accidentally caught by fisheries worldwide. The Anglerfish The angry-looking deep-sea anglerfish has a right to be cranky. It's quite possibly the ugliest animal on the planet. Generally dark gray to dark brown in color, they have huge heads and enormous crescent-shaped mouths filled with sharp, translucent teeth. Their most distinctive feature, worn only by females, is a piece of dorsal spine that protrudes above their mouths like a fishing pole. Tipped with a lure of luminous flesh that's built-in rod bait, getting prey close enough to be snatched, anglerfish can wiggle the lure to better mimic living bait as well. Most species can open their mouths wide enough to devour prey whole, using their fangs not only as daggers but as bars of a cage. They can actually swallow prey up to twice their own size. Few wonders of the sunless depths appear quite so ghoulish or improbable as anglerfish, creatures that dangle bioluminescent lures in front of needle-like teeth. Some anglerfish can be quite large. Most, however, are significantly smaller, often less than a foot, an anglerfish came to the attention of science in 1833 when a specimen of the bizarre fish, a female, was found on the shores of Greenland. The Goblin Shark There's still a lot of mystery surrounding the life of the goblin shark, but we do know where they live. The goblin shark has been known to lurk between 130 and 4,265 feet below the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans. The creature's muscles are flabby, its skeleton is mushy, and its weird skin is thin and transparent. Definitely not cute, but maybe in an ugly cute way. Its long, flat snout is covered with special organs to sense electric fields in the deep, dark water and hunts its prey by exploring electric fields. But the strangest feature of this monster is its jaw. It can be extended to the length of its snout to help the goblin shark ambush fish, squid, and crustaceans. The goblin shark's jaws shoot out, racing forward at 16 feet per second, faster than any other shark. In fact, it's faster than most cobra snakes. At maximum extension, the jaws make up almost 10% of the shark's entire body. That's a huge chomp from a shark that grows to be over 10 feet long. And those razor-sharp teeth? You can't miss them! Northern Stargazer The Northern Stargazer can reach lengths of 22 inches and is found on the Atlantic shores. The mouth of the Stargazer faces up so that it can ambush prey while hiding in the sandy bottoms of the sea. The top of the Stargazer has electric organs which can generate and transmit an electric shock too. They bury themselves in the sand and wait for prey usually smaller fish, to happen by. When it senses food is nearby, it can use a jolt of electricity to stun its prey and subsequently devour it. It also has a gigantic mouth which, lucky for its camouflage, no prey can spot quickly enough. 
Once in the vicinity of its gaping pie hole, no small fish or crustacean is safe. Since light is at a premium where the stargazer hunts, it's camouflaged quite well, making dinner easy to catch. Aside from being hard to spot, the northern stargazer fish does have to defend itself against larger predators. Those who wish to make the stargazer their lunch might come upon a shocking surprise. The stargazer's scientific name means one who aims at the stars, and they can be found at depths of up to 120 feet. Those were 15 of the most terrifying monsters found in the deep sea. Thanks for watching.